I have competed in some of the biggest races in the United States. I've won some, I've lost even more. But when you recondition your mind and you know exactly what you want, good things will happen. Or will they? Representing HealthNet, presented by Maxis, ladies and gentlemen, the big Aussie on the podium last year, second place, Carl Menzies. Riding out of Colossal, Massachusetts, the bid number 15, representing Shelly Bell, ladies and gentlemen, the big Aussie. This is the CSC Invitational, 2007, in Arlington, Virginia. I was so excited to be here. But it wasn't my first rodeo. I mean, hell, I've been on a podium and ran top 10 twice. I should at least get a call up, right? Nah, nah. Let's see what happened before that. So 2005, I was just getting out of college. And I was going to take a, a job working at EA Sports in Playa del Rey. Instead, I raced for this small team out of Northern California sponsored by... A real estate guy who was into selling um, commercial and residential real estate, uh, Charlie McGuire. And this team here you see was composed of exactly this group, except we did bring on Jason Allen from New Zealand later in the year, which really helped boost us. But this team was really ran and, uh, by Eric Saunders, who's in the middle, and Roman, who's just uh, second to the far left. Eric had a really good uh, history in the sport. He came up through the hard knocks, spent some time in France, and was really a, a asshole, but a fearless leader that everyone needed to respect um, for his tenacity and how he ran the team. Uh, this is 2005, as you can see. Man, I mean, these this race CSC was always stacked. It was the first race leading into Philly week. Uh, you can see Kodak there, Navigators, Bissell, uh, Tia Kreff, CSC always brought over a team. Uh, yeah, I mean, Health Net, you, you name it, Jittery Joes, and there I am, a little guy making 500 bucks a month, traveling the world, uh, or traveling the U.S., uh, racing bikes. And uh, yeah, this day was good for us. Uh, this picture to me means a lot because you can see I'm way back there. I'm about three riders from the very back. And uh, I was just holding on. You know, this was a 100K race, and this is down to the end. You see CSC, Navigators, Jelly Belly, Setting the Tempo, Health Net. Um, but I was scrappy, you know, and I kind of been away from the top of the score for almost four and a half years, but I was still able to get in there. This is another picture that I wanted to emphasize. Um, behind me is the national champion, Tyler Farrar. Behind him is Canadian national champion, Corey Fraser. Um, and I believe uh, that's uh, maybe one of the McCormick brothers. I'm not 100% sure, but it's just kind of funny to see that uh, I had I was in a group with so many hitters and at the time didn't think much about it. It was me racing my bike and now that I look at this, it's like, wow, man, I was racing some really big hitters back then. So this happened with uh, two to go and I'm not sure who the guy on the very front is, but if you look to the left, you see the McGuire guy looking back. That was my last lead out guy, uh, Olympic champion. Jason Allen from New Zealand. He came over to our team uh, late in the year, uh, but was an instrumental guy because he brought a lot of horsepower. He brought a lot of um, uh, tenacity. He was just, and also just a fun person to be around. Um, and of course, got to go back to the horsepower. So he was my last guy, and he's doing what a lead out guy do, making sure I'm okay. And I don't know how, but I slid through this crash, and I was able to make it back to his will. And uh, I think we were actually crossing one to go at this point. And the results were actually pretty fantastic for a really small team. I was able to get on the podium. Uh, Ivan Dominguez won. Ivan Stevich 
uh, from Serbia was second. Kurt Kobe from Navigators was third. Bobby Julik was uh, fourth. And I was fifth. Um, believe it or not, I won the field sprint. Um, those guys were off the front. I remember Bobby Julik just kind of drilling it all day long. This was probably, I don't know, this CSE is definitely tough, um, especially for guys like himself who are not crit racers. Um, but I'm sure he used this as a big opener uh, for the next few days, which was uh, Reading, Lancaster, and then, of course, uh, going up Maniuk at the uh, championship in Philly, which uh, we all competed in just a few days later. So I'm going to skip past 2006 and go to 2007. So Aaron, you know, 2006, uh, I was on Tia Kref. I ran seventh. Uh, we didn't really have a good team there. Uh, I believe Brad Huff was even eighth, and we were teammates. Um, it just didn't work out in our favor, but here I am, rock racing, this kind of just ragtag team. So it's myself, Sergio Hernandez, Kelly Grande, Sterling Bagnell, Mariano Fedrick, Rudy Napolitano, uh, JJ's brother, Sebastian Aedo, and Frankie, who looks like he probably just finished off a, a donut or something. Um, it was cool arriving um, into the DC area and seeing like posters and stuff from the previous year uh, that really helped me frame my mindset for um, not just being the underdog. Um, and honestly, we were there to win, but no one really, no one really thought we could win. Even the funny story about Hilton Clark seeing me in the hotel lobby, um, saying that if I didn't have a skin suit on, that I couldn't win. And he said that in a very jokingly way, because Hilton and I uh, got along and had a really good relationship. But look, we didn't have anything. I mean, we had you know, our little ragtag team and we were out there and and, and we didn't really care what, what, what people thought. Um, we thought we were cool because we had these big Cadillacs and stuff like that, that we drove all these cars across country and it was good. Uh, I never forget uh, being at the start line and seeing all these guys getting called up. That was uh, Hank Vogel's a guy I learned a lot from in my younger years uh, when I was on Mercury with him. That's uh, JJ Hayato. Another guy I followed around when he was race, racing domestically on Toyota United. Next to him is Carl Menzies. Um, that was Rob Laybourne there, uh, who, who was shaking hands. He is the promoter and director of this race, who, which actually still going on today. It's called the Air Force Cycling Classic. Uh, and there's one of my nemesis because he lives in Southern California uh, and, and raced at a high level. That's Hilton Clark. Uh, they're in agreement that Alex Candelario, one of the most consistent guys to ever race. And then uh, a guy I semi-grew up racing juniors with right there, that's Danny Pate. So I'm still waiting, I'm waiting my time, uh, thinking I'm going to get a call up. Uh, you just saw uh, the Canadian national champion, Dominique Roland, roll up. Uh, and there's Brad Huff. Um, I was teammates with him for one year on Tia Cref. That didn't work out. Uh, yeah, so I'm just back there. I'm like, all right, let me get a call up. Uh, 2006, I ran fifth. 2007, I ran seventh. I've got, you know, this race is hard. A lot of people don't even finish. And I did get a call up. I, I'm telling you, this like lit the fire under me. And I was so mad at so many people that I didn't get the recognition I thought I deserved. And from that point, I was all locked in. The race always started off fast. Even though it was 100K and everyone knew it was going to be a hard, windy, hot race and the attrition rate was so high, you could just look at the faces, um, you know, to race this 1K course where you're jumping out of a turn every 10 seconds for the most part and it's 110 degrees and it's 100% humidity. Um, it was tough and you had all these bigger teams out there just driving the pace and as you can see from these photos, it was always on. There was never a dull moment. Um, 
and you just had to hold on. And I'm telling you, I can't even describe to you how warm it is. And we raced right at the top of the day. I think it was like a 1230 start or one o'clock start where it's just the sun is just beaming on you. Uh, look at my face there. It's just full of salt. I have no gloves on. We're all in all black, black helmet. And you just are just dying. And uh, it's one of those things you just got to hold on. And uh, this picture right here is actually pretty tight, man. You, you got, you know, two world tour guys and, and my black on right in the middle. And you, you just look back, you know, I look back on that. And I was like, I'm so happy that I recognized early that it was all in my head. I mean, of course you have to train and, and whatnot, but a lot of this game is mental. And once you get past the mental part, the rest is kind of history. Um, so these pictures kind of just describe what was going on in the day. We had a breakaway and uh, actually Jay, uh, Sebastian Hayato was in the break, three guys. And CSC is one of the title sponsors. It would look really good for them to win. So they're on the front and they're chasing hard. So lap after lap, CSC and Toyota United which was the dominant team in the US, was taking turns chasing. Now it's one of the longest standing teams in the US on the front that was ran by Ed Beeman, uh, Navigators. Navigators, I believe, was an insurance company and they always had like the Eastern block riders and were really good and you had to watch them. If you look to the far back, you can see a blue jersey. That's my teammate, Kelly Grande. We were actually setting up the race for him. One thing I did love about CSC as well is the crowds. Holy cow. But check this video out. So you just saw the three riders that have been off the front for about 30 minutes. Um, this is the situation I was telling you about where CSC is chasing. I wish I'd had a uh, heads up display for you guys to see how fast we're going. Uh, it doesn't look like we're going too fast right here, but we're easily going, um, you know, 42, 45 kilometers an hour after an hour and a half of racing. And this is where it's getting real serious. Um, I'm at the, you know, it's definitely the second back of the race. Uh, there's only about maybe 40 riders left out of a field that started with about 130. Uh, maybe about 50 riders at this point but you can see the second part of the of the group is just kind of dangling on they don't really have a chance and uh, this was it this was like this is where you make your money and uh it was something it's something about five lap fever you sprinters out there uh know about that i believe that was adam myerson just kind of chilling on the back right there so you can see the wind uh, of the speed that, that we're producing from the banner uh i mean it's it's on and uh, each lap under the five laps I just felt like I got better and better and better and then next thing you know I'm in the top 15 and then next thing you know I'm in the top 10 and um, this is when you know your mind starts playing tricks on you uh, you know it, it's so hot out there that you're, you're dehydrated they do have a feed zone um, my arms are cramping my hands are cramping my feet are cramping but at this point it's go or no go and here we are this is bell lap and you can see me on the far left right there just kind of squeezing in I, i'm not even getting a draft I'm, I'm, I'm fighting i'm fighting and then i come out of the last corner and i i, I find myself in a position to sprint and I, i'm like oh i'm hurting but i can sprint hilton clark's in front of me stevich i could beat stevich to this point and then i just let loose i put my head down and i sprint and boom hit the line no skin suit Hilton Clark, <laughs> one of the biggest wins, and it was so much fun. And this this guy right here running, honestly, when I saw this video, it made my day because you know, DC is the chocolate city. They come over the bridge to Virginia to watch me race, and it was one of the most thrilling things I've ever done. So let's talk about the sprint for a second. At this point. It's a long way to go. And it, it says 200, it's all uphill. And after racing this thing for over two and a half hours, just about two and a half hours, my goal was to beat Hilton Clark to another point so where he couldn't pinch me in. Because if Hilton gets his front wheel in front of mine, he's gonna totally box me in and there's absolutely nothing I can do. 
um, because the barricades are to the uh, off to the right so my goal was just to beat him to one spot and I was able to do that once I did that Ivan Stevich and I were both you could just feel the pain that we were going through at this moment I mean pretty much everyone's suffering JJ Haedo can't sprint he didn't have a good day Alex Candelario you can tell like bad form me bad form Ivan Stevich is like he's got good form but everyone is absolutely just trashed and we're still sprinting at 40 plus miles an hour so at this point it's like dude you could win like it's it's all in head down and when i sprint i try to keep my head rotated down for more aerodynamic and i just look up every now and then and i think that helped because you would tell by the picture you can see by the picture how much i won by it wasn't much it was such a, a close finish and look at the crowd oh my god what an amazing day not only for myself my fam but for cycling um for the african-american cyclists uh, also for rock racing it was huge for us and uh, I'll never forget this day this is when I knew I won hands are coming off the bars you can see Kale back there with his hands up he's cruising in in the top 10 um, and it was just I remember like it was yesterday to be honest with you and uh, this is why I wanted to do uh, this this podcast over these videos and over these photos because this was a win that really set me apart you know it wasn't just your typical crit this was like a big boy crit you know what i mean you couldn't come to this crit uh and, and not be ready to rumble and as you can see i didn't have a skin suit on <laughs> and i was able to smash it smash and grab so uh beautiful day uh excellent race um i'm glad i got a chance to experience what it's like to cross the line first there absolutely amazing amazing energy and uh, I'm gonna let this video roll uh, and you can see what the post-race stuff was like. Enjoy. Rashan Bahadi, Rock Racing. You know what, I was watching him closely and said it looked a couple of times like Rashawn was struggling to hang on. Was he going to come off the back? Guess what? He made, it, he made it through that critical point and ends up being the CSC. American, a Serb, and an Aussie, the country's representative, the United States of America is victorious. At the CSC Invitational, Krishan Bahadi. Congratulations, Krishan. Uh, that's some goosebumps on his body. Uh, that means it means something to me. Uh, gotta tell you, a couple of little 500 riders, us, and uh, this is a very, very special moment. Uh, this is a big win in your young pro career. Besides winning nationals, this is the biggest win I've ever had. So. <laughs> I'm excited, man. I'll tell you something else. I'm not going to say that Rock Racing was a favorite in this race. There's no way I'm going to lie to you people. They weren't when you talk about the big teams. This is a new club right here. This young man's had so much success. Many times junior national champion, elite criterium champion. Sean's had a lot of wins, but you heard him say besides nationals, his biggest win. And I gotta say that uh, to put a new team on the map, buddy, you couldn't do it any better way than with your win here today. Uh, I hate to sound so uh, generic about it and say, oh, the team, and I couldn't have done it. But 110%, there's no way that Rockin' Republic and Rock Race and the brand if they didn't come over and help a bunch of young guys who just wanted to race their bike, race their bike, I wouldn't be here right now. So huge hats off to Rock and Republic and Rock Racing. Uh, I wouldn't have been here without them. Big hand, huh? An American wins this championship, CFC Invitational. And I gotta tell him now, because when I've interviewed this young man many times for his other big wins, and a lot of them when he was a junior, he was with uh, teams that were very well known. 
I gotta ask him right now, this is my first time interviewing a champ at a big race from Rock Racing, Rockin' Republic, so I'm sure your fans out there, everybody here wants to know, what are we talking about? Who's Rock Racing? Who's Rockin' Republic? Why don't you tell us all? Rockin' Republic is a killer clothing line uh, based out of Los Angeles, California. Those of you who like to spend a lot of money, they have really nice denim jeans. And all you ladies out there, they, they really look good on you. And so, uh, instead of being rockin' Republic, hey, they said rock racing, and we're rocking today. You are rocking today. You are the, there's the rock of Gibraltar. You are the rock of Clarendon today, brother. You are something else. Wow, bring us, bring us the action. Tell us what was going through the mind, because this guy is such a fox when it comes to sprint finishes. This is a bright racer, or he wouldn't have won so many pack sprint finishes. And what were you thinking? You got all these stars you're competing at the end of the race, and you got the Navigators, you've got CSC, you got all these teams, big teams. Who are you Who are you saying, you gotta bring me to the line, I wanna draft off you. Who did you pinpoint? Well, I just wanna say, like you said, we, we weren't a favorite amongst you guys and the the officials and all you guys, but when we had our team meeting today, Frankie Angero, our killer uh, uh, director, said, you know, between Kel, Sebastian, and yourself, Hassan, you guys can pull it off. And in the middle of the race, he saw me at the back. I was really suffering, that wasn't a joke. And I just fought through it. So uh, it was just, uh, you know, I had to give him my all for all you guys out here. Thanks for coming out. There you have it, Rashawn Bahati, congratulations, Rashawn. Sit down. And ladies and gentlemen, it was an international war waged on bicycles, and the United States of America was victorious today in Clarendon. Your champion, Rashawn Bahadi, Rock Racing, the United States. Thanks for going down memory lane with me. Uh, this was one of the most memorable days of my life, and I got a chance to do it with some of the closest people in my life, um, which I still have good contact with. Uh, make sure to check out the Air Force Cycling Classic on Zwift this year, and uh, talk to you soon.